get a prize? I do. <laughs> hey there guys, this is Richard, your host with another marvelous video. The iconic Hellraiser franchise received a fresh boost with the new Hellraiser movie, which brought back the gory details of the slasher genre one more time. David Bruckner's Hellraiser promised to be true to the origins and even though the story seems to stray from the original canon, the overall theme remains the same. One of the things about the movie that grabbed a few eyeballs was the introduction of some new Cenobites, the twisted, sadistic creatures from the hellish dimension. These new demonic monsters exhibit the same fetish for pain and torture that we've seen before, but their features are fresh additions to the lore. In this video, we bring you all the new Cenobites that you'll encounter while watching the movie. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you. Let's begin. Their pain. All for us. The all new female. Pinhead. Ever since we had the taste of Clive Barker's first Hellraiser movie, we're familiar with the deadliest Cenobite of all, the Hell Priest Pinhead. Traditionally, Pinhead was the leader of the Cenobites and he was portrayed as a male character. Doug Bradley owned the role with his thundering voice and impeccable performance, and the fans couldn't imagine the gender of Pinhead being altered. Of course, there's been an instance in the Hellraiser comics presented by Boom Studios where Kirsty Cotton is transformed into Pinhead and the original Pinhead goes back to his human form. You can check out our video on this to learn more about the whole story. However, nothing about the female Pinhead portrayed in the new Hellraiser movie suggests that she is Kirsty Cotton transformed. The narrative doesn't even provide a backstory for her character, and we may have to wait for the next movie to learn more about this one. However, the new female Pinhead is quite impressive and lived up to the legacy of the character. Jamie Clayton seems like the perfect fit for the role, and her leadership seems to be just as terrifying as you would expect from the lead, Cenobite. While her overall appearance remains the same, with the pins stuck inside her face and head, the director David Bruckner made some changes to her attire, which didn't disappoint the fans. She was largely seen alongside a familiar accomplice chatterer Cenobite, and that was the only trace of familiarity among the Cenobites in this movie. Ronald Voigt as a Cenobite. If there is one thing that bothered us about Hellraiser 2022, it's the lack of proper backstories for the Cenobites that we saw on the screen. Just like they did for female Pinhead, none of the other newly introduced Cenobites were given adequate backgrounds, and they just happened to exist without the actual story behind them. However, Ronald Voigt is an exception, largely because he's only transformed into a Cenobite towards the end of the movie. He starts off as the main antagonist, who prompts an innocent victim to solve the cursed puzzle box to summon the Cenobites. Later, he's explored better, and we learn that he was an extremely successful businessman who got bored of the worldly pleasures. Nothing seemed to be new or challenging enough for him, which probably got him desperate enough to solve the puzzle box himself. He sought a new sensation, but he found out that the Cenobites' idea of sensation was simply a morbid form of body horror and extreme torture. They install a strange contraption on his chest, which keeps pulling his nerves, making him suffer unspeakable pain. Whatever doesn't kill you doesn't necessarily make you stronger. As we see Voigt in agonizing pain, hoping for a quick relief instead of the lifelong torment. All his schemes to appease the Cenobites were simply a ploy to find a way to get rid of his pain. At the end of the movie, Voigt is able to grant himself an audience with Pinhead, and he demands for his contraption to be removed. Pinhead informs him that there is no turning back, and he can simply change his reward into another form. Voigt chooses Leviathan, which signifies power, and he assumed that he will have more authority and power to control his situation. Situation. He is briefly transformed into a normal human again, but then begins the horrifying part. He is seen being transformed into a Cenobite, and it happens to be one of the most graphic moments in the entire film. The skin-peeling, body-mutilating sequence shows him being raised up, and he's then made a permanent part of the Cenobite realm. The haunting heavenly vocals and blinding white light only add up to the suddenness of the scene. We hope to see more of him in the upcoming Hellraiser movies because the evil nature of Voigt can be a lot worse in his Cenobite form, and his transformation as the last scene might just be a hint for a possible sequel. 
The Gasp Cenobite. She is yet another extremely disturbing new addition to the Cenobite army, and even the hardened Hellraiser fans will tell you that the sight of the Gasp sends shivers down their spine. She seems to be the right-hand woman for Pinhead, and authoritatively looks like the second-in-command. While her character is completely new, the appearance seems to be a fusion work of some previously known female Cenobites, such as Angelique and Deep Throat. The presence of the Gasp makes it a true tribute to the original Hellraiser franchise, and her mutual will leave a deep scar in your mind. The skin of her scalp is dragged downwards to her shoulders and throat, and they're attached by hooks. This feature will bring back memories of Angelique. It presents a suitably terrifying appearance that you would expect from a Cenobite. She serves Leviathan, just like Pinhead does, and she carries out commands of Pinhead to torture the souls unfortunate enough to solve the puzzle box. The powers of the Gasp include the ability to control wires at will, and she can make it work to her advantage, just like Pinhead has her way with chains. The scenes of her torturing one of the human characters named Trevor are unforgettable. Her steel wires can land a lethal blow, and she'll be another Cenobite to watch out for in the next edition of the movie. Selena Lowe, who plays the role of the Gasp in the movie, spoke about the challenges of playing such a twisted character. She had to master the mannerisms to be threatening enough, and she enjoyed one of her badass lines just as much as we viewers did. Save your breath for screaming. The Mother Cenobite Sometimes you simply don't require a lot of screen time to have the desired impact, and the Mother Cenobite is the perfect example. You'll only get to catch a glimpse of this twisted monstrosity, but trust us when we say that it'll be enough to experience a few sleepless nights. Her body is dissected with visible flesh wounds all over her frontal parts. She seems to be experiencing a mutilated pregnancy, and she moves, holding her heavy stomach. While nothing is revealed about her previous life, we can assume that a troubled pregnancy made her desperate enough to solve the puzzle box, and her Cenobite life added a demented side to her agony. Hellraiser has previously worked along the themes of maternal instinct and explored a dark side of it. The mother Cenobite simply seems to be an addition to that lore. When she appears in the blue light, it almost seems surreal for a moment, and the overall aura is bound to bring back the debate of whether Cenobites are simply misunderstood angels. The Weeper Cenobite If you think that the Weeper Cenobite looked scary enough, wait till you hear what the creators originally had in mind. The mutilations and morbidity that you see in the Weeper Cenobite are a toned-down version of the original because they ran out of time. Even then, the Weeper Cenobite was visually unnerving and had some prominent features to be identified in the group of Cenobites. The Weeper had dark blue skin, and her large black eyes were always filled with black tears. She had some gaping wounds on her body, the flesh from which is missing, and attached to her skin. Some might be tempted into thinking that the Weeper almost had an extraterrestrial look, and it wouldn't be an unfair thought because technically the Cenobites do belong to a different realm. The missing lower lip and chin added to the grotesquely horrific appearance, and if all this wasn't enough, the Weeper could split her arms open and reveal a second pair that was strung together by surgical pins. Simply going by appearance alone, the Weeper will probably steal the show as the most shocking Cenobite that you see in the movie. The creepy sound that she makes is just the cherry on top, and we certainly hope to see more of her in the future projects. The Asphyx Cenobite What could be gorier than a man being choked by layers of his own skin? Well, the Hellraiser franchise always finds way to bring forth some of the most unimaginable forms of torture, and the Asphyx Cenobite is a fresh addition to that library. This Cenobite has a flayed, skinless body, and all that skin has been wrapped around his face, smothering him for breath. Every breath is a struggle, which is evident from the heaving chest and wheezing sound that he makes. His hands are tied together by wires in a prayer-like position, but when these hands are freed momentarily, we get to witness just how deadly this Cenobite can be. The scene where the Asphyx attacks the protagonists, Riley and Colin, has to be one of the scariest moments in the movie. During this attack, the Cenobite is trapped between two sides of the gate, and when the skin mask is ripped off, a disgusting, gooey, skeletal face is revealed under the layers. The raspy wails and demonic sounds of the Asphyx Cenobite are stuff that nightmares are made up of. We simply can't deny the disgusting appeal that comes with the Asphyx Cenobite, and courtesy of the good work on the practical effects, the scene comes alive during his presence. The Mask Cenobite Imagine a massive surgical procedure being carried out and the doctor stops midway. 
Yep, that is what describes the look of the mask Cenobite best. An incomplete surgery that left the human anatomy opened up and twisted in more ways than one. His stretched out face and his head is wrapped around by a surgical wire, and his partially dissected and mutilated flesh has some scriptures on the chest. The structure would have been falling apart had it not been for all the pins and wires that bind the living corpse, and the director actually described him as a prelude to the Cenobites. Could he be a descendant of Le Marchand? We have to wait for more about him in the upcoming projects to find out. Ever since the director claimed to bring back the original charm of Hellraiser, people expected many of the old Cenobites to be back in action. It was surprising to see so many new additions, but in terms of designs and effects, the creative team did a commendable job. As we've said before, it would have been amazing to learn about the fascinating backstories of these twisted creatures of Hell, and maybe the next movies can solve this issue for the fans. Do let us know in the comments below about your thoughts and the new Cenobites, and don't forget to tell us about your favorite one from the list. And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one and be safe. Thanks, everyone.